Hi guys, today I've got a video uh, explaining some of the settings in Slicer. So, I've just got a fresh install of Repetia Host and I haven't got my printer connected as you can see on the left. Um, so, you'll find the settings under the Slicer tab and in Configuration. It can take a wee while to load sometimes. Um, there we go. Uh, so you've got print settings, filament settings, and printer settings. We'll start off with the print settings. So um, the first is under layers and perimeters. So layer height is the height that, that each layer is printed at. So if we have a look at this model here that's pre-sliced, it is just your layers across here. So a lower value will make a better looking object. Um, generally, most FDM printers can't go up, go below sort of 0.1 mil. Um, so usually I just have it at sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. Uh, and then your first layer height, leave that at around 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Um, Anything below 0 0.2, you're going to have a bit of a harder time to make it stick. Uh, and then we've got perimeters. So that is the number of perimeters around the outside. So 1, 2, 3. Uh, you, can some, you can set that higher if you want or set it lower. Um, spiral vase. That is if you're printing like a single wall, perimeter walled object. Uh, you don't really need it, so I just leave it as it is. Um, horizontal shells, so that is the number of solid shells along the top and along the bottom. So in this case, we've got three solid shells along the top, solid layers along the top, and three along the bottom. Uh, and then the settings down here, don't worry about them too much. Um, I'd personally sort of leave them as they are. Uh, extra perimeters if needed. You can turn that off if you're testing your printer. Um, so if you're trying to create a single walled cube or something like that. Um, yeah, the rest are pretty, pretty standard. Uh, external perimeters first. Don't use that. Uh, it's a lot worse than you think it think it would be. Um, so then we'll go on to infill. So the fill density is sort of the percentage of how much infill is used. Um, so if we have a look at this, uh, yeah, inf so if you have a higher infill, you'll have more material in here, or lower infill, you ha you'll have uh, less material. So the Squares will be a bit bigger. Um, uh, hexagons will be a bit bigger. So, uh, and yeah, so if you if you want to make a stronger object, you'd have it at a higher infill, and a weaker object that uses less material, you'd have it at a lower infill. Uh, the fill pattern is just the layout of the infill. So in this model, we have a honeycomb. As you can see there, or you could have it at like rectilinear, so straight lines. Um, the lower three, those three that say slow next to them, I wouldn't bother with those, they're a bit too complicated. And then the uh, top and bottom fill pattern, uh, you can just leave that as rectilinear. Um, it's just the layout of your, of your top and bottom infill pattern. Uh, so then we've got combine infill every number of layers. So that is if you want to print three layers of per perimeters first and then a thicker infill layer. It saves a bit of time. Um, once you get your printer set up correctly, it can be real useful if you're printing at sort of 0 0.1 millimeters. Uh, and then in only infill where needed. Uh, generally, I don't use that too much. It just infills, say if you've got no infill, um, 
it only infills where it's sort of needed. Basically says what it what it is in the title. Uh, and then we've got the advanced uh, setting infill settings. Um, so you can solid and make it do a solid infill every layer or every sort of fifth layer if you want. Uh, fill angle. Most of the time you're going to be leaving that set 45. For some prints you might change it to 90 or something like that. And then solid infill thresh hold area. Um, usually I just leave that at 0 millimeters squared. Um, but what it is, is if anything, say you've got it set to 50, it's going to be, it's going to print a solid infill on anything lower, that's anything lower than 50 millimeters squared. Uh, and then the bottom two you can basically leave. Uh, so then we've got your speed settings, so that's how fast your printer moves and prints at. So your perimeters, that really depends on what printer you have, so that's just how fast it prints those inner, inner layers, uh, outside layers. Um, and then small perimeters and external perimeters, you just want to set them generally a little bit lower than your than your main perimeters, so your external is the one around the outside. Uh, lowering them makes a sort of makes a better print quality. Although if you have your printer set up real real good, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, infill, that's just how fast your infill prints at. And then solid infill, top infill again, how fast your top and bottom infill print at, and your solid infill. Um, and then support material, we'll get to that later. Bridges and gap fill, generally you want to set them a bit lower, um, especially gap fill. Around 20 millimeters per second is probably all right. Uh, and then speed for non-print mode, so that's when it's not, your printer's not printing. Um, so when it's just moving around the bed or going to print in another point. Uh, some printers can print really high, sort of 300, will move real high, sort of, sort of 300 to 400 millimeters per second. Uh, for my printer, I, I'll usually have it set at about 1, 120, otherwise it shakes too much. Um, and then first layer speed, you always want to set your first layer speed quite low, so either as a percentage or, or sort of something like that, so 20 millimeters. Per second, that will make the first layer stick a lot better, and you're less likely to get curling. Uh, and then acceler acceleration controls don't bother um, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, skirt and brim, so that's um, if you want to make a bit round the outside, outside just to get the filament going. Uh, that's always a good idea, just to clear the nozzle. Um, you can set a minimum extrusion length, so like 10 or 20 mils, so print 10 or 20 mils around the outside and then start your print, or you can just have a single loop or whatever. Um, and then support material, so support material is used to prevent sort of drooping, um, so if say you've got something on an angle and you want to print it, it will print a little sort of structure next to it, so plastic has something to hold onto, um, and it will automatically generate it for overhangs over, over a certain, uh, so here I've got it set to zero for the default, um, usually I'll have it set to sort of 60 degrees so when it gets to 60 degrees any overhangs over 60 degrees um, it will print a print a support structure and then you've got raft you only really need to use that if you're um curling up at the edges or your print prints coming off so it just prints a little structure underneath to hold to hold the print onto the print bed and then you've got your support material options so that's just um, basically your infill settings and that sort of thing 
um, if you like for the um, for the support material. You don't really need to change them too much. Uh, and then notes, that's just notes. Uh, output options, don't really need to change those. Multiple extruders, uh, you can use those if you've got multiple extruders. I don't, so I've never used them before. Uh, advanced, uh, you're not going to change too much in here unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, usually I'll change the default extrusion width um, to test my printer. So I might set it to sort of 0 0.42 I think for my solid oodle and then I'll print a single walled uh, cube and measure it to see if it comes out at 0 0.42 uh, millimeters. Um, so yeah, don't change these too much. Uh, for the bridge flow ratio, if you find your bridges are drooping too much, you want to lower that slightly, and if they're being cut off, increase it a bit. Um, and then threads, that's how many threads your computer uses. So say if you've got a four-core computer, um, you can use four threads, I think. Uh, and then resolution, if your print, if your computer is a bit slower, um, you can set it to something. So set it to like one mil or so, something like that. It just reduces the quality of the um, uh, model. Uh, so then we go on to the filament settings. So first you've got your filament diameter. Diameter. So most printers print with 1.75 or 3 millimeter filament, but you're going to want to measure measure the size of your filament beforehand and enter it here. And your extrusion multiplier. If you're printing too much, you want to lower it. And if you're print, printing, um, if you're not printing enough, you want to increase increase the multiplier. And then your temperature is basically just your temperature. If you wanna, if you're having trouble sticking to your bed or your prints sort of separating at the layers, you wanna increase that. Um, and then we've got cooling, so you can enable auto cooling on sort of smaller objects. Um, if, if say their print time's under 30 seconds, it will cool the layers and slow down the print. So you don't get a nasty sort of plasticky mess. Uh, and then the cooling threshold again, that it will slow the slow the print speed if it's if the layer print print time for the layer is below sort of thirty seconds, or you can change that. Um, it'll lower it, lower it to ten millimeters per second, but you can increase that as well, obviously. Uh, and then we've got the printer settings. So that's your size of your print bed uh, and where the center is and that sort of thing. Uh, vibration limit, that's quite useful if you want to stop your printer shaking itself to bits. Um, so you'd set it at sort of like three or four hertz maybe. Uh, and then we've got custom G code. You're going to want to use this. Uh, so basically, your G28 homoaxes means that it homes the axes before you start. Um, you can change that. You can change all of these quite easily. So your start G code is what happens before the print, uh, and your end G code is what happens after the print. So it turns off the temperature, or it turns off the uh, bed in the extruder. Homes all the axes and disables the motors. And then the last two, you can change sort of each layer. Um, so if you want want to do want the printer to do something on each layer, you can. Or uh, tool. Oh, so that changes. You can change it. Change how your extruder operates. Uh, and then extruder one. So what you've got first is your nozzle diameter, so that's the size of your nozzle. Uh, I think I have about a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, extruder offset, don't worry about that too much. Retraction, so that's how much how much the filament retracts 
well, length is how much the filament retracts when retraction is enabled. So you can set that sort of one or two mil, um, maybe a little bit higher, sort of three mil. Uh, lift Z, you don't really need this if you've got your printer set up correctly, but what it does is lifts, um, well, it doesn't really lift the, the nozzle, but lowers your platform so uh, you don't bang into other prints. Um, and then you've got your speed, the speed of your retraction, extra length on restart, that's quite useful uh, when you're doing infill when you want want it to stick a little bit better uh, and then the other one minimum travel after retraction don't wor worry too much about that uh, retract on layer change you definitely want to keep that ticked and wipe while retracting don't bother too much about that and the other ones yeah you can basically load, leave those so when it comes time time to save these settings you want to head up to save and type in something so say um, I'll just go test and it will save those and then you exit out of that and you go to your slicer settings and you would slice the object with the sli big slice button there um, but first what you're going to want to do is change your print setting and your printer settings to what you what you want and your extruder I suppose um, so we have, didn't change the change uh, print settings we just left it in untitled um, and then printer settings and then extruder we didn't change those either but you you would obviously name them something uh, that you can remember what they are and once you've got that set up you can then go to override slicer settings so that will let you enable support, enable cooling, change the layer height, um, and change a few infill settings. So that's basically it. Um, hope you enjoyed this and it's been helpful. Thanks again. Um, I'll see you next time. Next time.